I'm a big proponent standard over schedule. And what I mean by that is have a set of standards that you hold to and make sure you accomplish those every week. So if my standard is three times a week exercise, I'm going to hit it. And if I plan on doing it today, but I'm just out of my funk, it's just got a got off of a uh, phone, bad conversation, uh, talk to my boss, whatever. I'm just not feeling it today. It's okay. You still have the week. Hit your standard. And so mm -hmm. uh, you, you mentioned, and I've had several clients who said that, like, hey, I think I need to work out more because if I have days where I'm not working out, I feel like <laughs> I get out of rhythm. And then before right. I know it, I'm not working out. So we created this thing where we got workouts and we have movement. So workout mm. is you're lifting weights, all right? You're lifting weights. And that is considered a workout for us, not, not cardio, not Peloton, not the treadmill. You're lifting. It's resistance training for your muscles three times a week. And then the days that you're not doing that, have movement. Like right. be intentional. Like I'm going to do 20 push-ups, right? I'm going to walk around the block. Like you're being intentional about movement. Sure, go for it. But whatever you do, make sure a week does not go by that you did not do your three workouts. And if you could do those movements as well, man, it's more power to you. Now we're accelerating mm -hmm. our, 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 you know, uh, progress. Hello and welcome to the Disrupt the Everyday podcast. We're here to help you navigate life while disrupting the status quo. Our discussions cover a number of topics relevant to everyday life. We discuss everything from relationships to entrepreneurship. We also engage in some difficult but important conversations. And now, here are your hosts, Brian and Tanya Hamilton. Welcome to another episode of the Disrupt the Everyday podcast. Today we're joined by Yuri DeRosha. Yuri, thanks for joining us today. Hey, thanks so much, Hamiltons, for having me. <laughs> oh, it's our pleasure. Uh, today we're going to be talking a lot about health, especially as it relates to to parents uh, with busy lives. Get to talk of conversation, get to know the guest. So, we're going to ask a loaded question: Who is Yuri Deroshik? Hmm. I would say I'm a pastor turned weight loss <laughs> coach. No joke. Um, okay. I moved to Dallas <laughs> back in two, 2008, but before that, I was the in-person personal trainer, and then I felt called to go to seminary and uh, plan a church, and so it was during that time of eight years where I'm getting this Christian education that I got the most amazing dad bod, and I remember back in 2018, I'm sitting on an airplane. And I, I felt so much pressure around my midsection. Um, I always felt tired. Uh, I remember always coming home from work, looking at my watch, wondering when's bedtime, because uh, I was just exhausted by the end of the day. And so I knew it was at that moment that like, hey, I need to lose weight. But I was hesitant, to be honest, uh, because I've had three short stints where I lost some weight. Got excited, got some compliments, dropped the uh, you know a size or two into my smaller clothes. You know how we have two sets of clothes <laughs> in our closet. Uh, and over time, I would just go back to my old habits. And then a year or two would go by and I'd be back to square one. So I was hesitant. So I knew something had to change. I needed a new strategy, new approach if I didn't want to repeat the old cycle. And so I went on my journey, lost 65 pounds. And it was during that time that my passion for health and fitness was rekindled. Uh, people, parents in particular, were asking me how I did it. And so that kind of pushed me back into the health and fitness uh, industry. And I launched my business at that time. And I have been doing online coaching since. And so to your question, who am I? I'm, I'm someone that genuinely, genuinely and truly wants to better other people. Um, any person that I come in contact with, I want them to walk away and feel like, man, my life got better as a result of being in a relationship with Yuri. Because Yuri's a giver, not a taker. 
He really has my best interest uh, at heart. And so that's why I do what I do, because I found in my life and in my client's life that, man, when we feel good, when we look good, we just show up so much more powerfully, right? In our marriage, as parents, relationships, I'll even say it in the bedroom, right? Like everywhere, we show up more powerfully. And so I realized, man, that's, that's like the first domino. If it falls, every other area of our life improves. And so I am super excited to help people on this journey. I I work with parents in particular, but they're entrepreneurs, stay-at-home moms or dads. uh, And they've just said, man, once that domino started to fall for me, I just got a promotion at work because I started showing up more powerfully to my job. Uh, My relationship with my kids is better. I actually want to go outside and play with them and engage with them because I have more energy. And so, man, that's why I like to, uh, you know, come alongside someone on this journey because that's the first domino. Sometimes it's not the book, the, the, the parenting book we need to pick up. Sometimes it's just <laughs> the dumbbell. And by doing that, it's just amazing how everything else just improves. Yeah. Now, the one thing that I, the one thing that I did know is that you do have a, uh, a master's of theology. So, you know, after after investing all that time and earning that education, was it was it difficult for you to kind of walk away from the path that you had already started or was it just a, was it just that natural of a transition once you adapted your lifestyle to, to just be more healthy yeah it's difficult for my parents <laughs> they always <laughs> ask you <laughs> they ask you like wait what are you doing how how does that connect with that um but no so my education like my formal education i'm still involved at the local church but i realized hey i I, I'm a coach at heart, right? And I would almost say like a pastor is kind of like a coach, right? They're trying to better the lives of other people through the word of God, for example, right? And so I think the root of coaching has always been, uh, you know, who I am. Um, and so I do, I do things at the local church um, where my education is, is, is very helpful, but I realized I don't have to get a paycheck from a church to use my education. So I do what I like to do at the church, no strings attached. And then I do this, uh, you know, full time. And so my conviction that, look, God truly cares about our health journey, how we look, how we feel. Like if you're a person of faith, well, God will only use you to the extent that your body is able Right. Right? And so if my body is breaking down, I'm limited. I could have a desire to to go on missions trips. I could have a desire to do all that. But if my body's given out, then what? So so the conviction is, hey, honestly, God cares about our health journey. He actually cares about how I look and feel. And so out of that conviction, a lot of people are inspired to actually take action because you know, for, for those people that maybe aren't in the church world, there's a there's a real kind of secular sacred divide where there are certain things that we deem as spiritual. Like if you're if you're reading scripture or praying, oh, that's spiritual. But an oil change, uh, changing, you know, a poopy diaper, ah, that, that that's not spiritual. And when when you realize that all of life is spiritual, whether we eat or drink, we do it for the glory of God. Then it just changes everything. Now it's like, whoa, I could invite a higher power along this journey. I don't have to compartmentalize God and think, oh, I have to do this on my own. I could actually invite God and say, help me do this. Give me the strength. Give me the consistency. Send me a coach my in my way, you know, to, to help me along the way. And so honestly, I've been able to, in a weird way, merge the two. Um but uh, yeah, still involved at a local church for sure. It's weird, I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, one thing that you made reference to as well was again during your time during the eight years in school, you developed like the the dad bod. Now, that being said, uh, again, because I'm sure there's people who are who are listening to this conversation right now that can relate to that, and there are probably things that you can look back on now, you know, applying that hindsight and say, okay, this is why that happened. What were some of the habits then that 
helped contribute to that uh, that change in your in your weight, I guess. You mean what were the habits that helped me lose weight or get into that state where I needed to lose weight? We'll go both avenues, but first, uh, first, just the things that help that caused you to get into that state. Even maybe simple things that at the time you didn't realize were having that impact. Uh, attributing to my weight gain. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, life happened, like it happens to <laughs> most of us, right? Um, w- when you're in college or uh, when you're single, you have more time on your hands. Uh, and it's easy to spend an hour or so at the gym. But when you have kids, at that time, we were pregnant with our fourth. When you have kids, when you're supporting your family, you're trying to, you know, have a healthy marriage, life happens. And oftentimes, by default, kind of our health deteriorates. We aren't intentional about eating healthy. It's what's quick, what's fast and easy. Um, you know, Netflix and chill, uh, ice <laughs> cream late at night, cookies. Um, and so just not being mindful of what we're putting into our body. And then obviously the, you know, the one or two bites that are left on kids plates, you know, you can't throw that away, right? That, that's being wasteful. <laughs> so we treat our body as a garbage disposal and we put everything into our body so we don't waste it. So those are some of the things. And then just kind of as a result, you're feeling tired. And so you tell yourself, well, I don't have the energy to to exercise. Or you tell yourself, I can't take away from my family. I'm gone at work eight to five. And how am I going to fit in exercise? That's just more time that I'm, I'm taking away. And so I had limiting beliefs that got me to where uh, I was. And I found that with my clients, they have the same limiting beliefs. We have this person that we have conversations with that tells us a lot of lies. Oh, this is my genetics. Oh, it's well, it's either my family or my health. So we have this either or in our mind. And so really when I started to shatter those things and say, no, no, no. how can I incorporate my family Uh, during my weight loss journey when I started asking the right questions there's an answer and so that's what I did I I included my family in my journey instead of leaving my kids at home and going to the gym by myself I said kids we're going to the gym and they have a kids club there and they're excited and you know my wife was excited she's like oh I have alone time you guys take your yeah. time at the gym. <laughs> and so now we're driving to the gym together with the kids. My wife's not like, you know, blowing up my text. Sometimes when we kind of do things where we feel like, oh, that's being selfish. And so, hey, what's mm-hmm. going on, babe? You're gone all day at work. And now you're gone for another hour and a half. This is mm-hmm. not sustainable. I took them with me. And so while we're driving to the gym, I'm having a conversation with the kids. I'm checking them in. They're seeing me work out. So now I'm modeling to them that, hey, we're not just talking that health and fitness is important, but I'm modeling that. You know, during COVID, I bought fitness bands and would work out in the living room. A lot of parents, my clients, they'll work out in the living room while their toddler is kind of crawling between their uh between their legs like we include the family it doesn't have to be an either or and so it was amazing and now my 10 year old who started going to the gym with me when she was probably like five is now working out with me and i have pictures it's kind of cool where she was like in the kids club as a five-year-old and now she's you know doing squats with me and so it's just this natural progression so and that's interesting like we went through that phase when our kids were younger too we did the whole uh it was great i was off on mat leave and that whole kids club thing that's amazing it's like a chance for you to work out get your shower in get a little break that was the best and it's interesting how as life changes you know you sort of ha- you have to go with it right because it came there there came a point where it was like i legit do not have time for the gym so how am i going to get this done at home 
right? So sometimes right. depending, you know, I'm sure you hear it all the time. I don't have enough time. Well, the reality is we all have enough time. One, we just have to make it a priority and it's going to look different for everybody, right? Like I don't go to the gym anymore. Every, all my workout equipment, everything I need, my machines is all here. I have no excuse. I, if I want to wash my face, brush my teeth before I start, I can. If I want to keep my pajamas on, I can, right? So now I know that every day I will get up and do that because the reality is if I had to get up and leave my house in the winter at 5.30, I would come up with an excuse every day, right? So, Absolutely. Yeah, so when you're dealing with parents and you know they bring up that that statement i don't have any time what do you recommend for them yeah that, that's a great point you know it, it's priority right but mm -hmm. and we all know that deep down um and so as a coach i need to kind of finesse it right and and the thing about a coach a good coach i'd say they're good at asking the right questions and allowing the person to come to that realization because when we come to a realization on our own and we have the aha moment it's powerful right like we will do it and and prior to that people could tell us and we just don't hear it until we just catch it and so it's true we all have 24 hours in a day but you know what as a coach, if I tell someone, you know, quit making up excuses, we all have 24 hours in a day, you're just not prioritizing. Rarely have I seen that cause someone to say, you're right. Yeah, I'm taking action. <laughs> right. And so I think it's it's progression. And so I would rather have imperfect action than perfect inaction. Right. And so my approach is, okay, can you commit to three times a week, 20, 30 minutes? That's really all I require of my clients. I'm, I'm a proponent that C's get degrees. All right. You don't need to be an A <laughs> student. You don't need to be 100% compliant. If a program requires you to be 100% compliant, chances are it's not going to be sustainable. And a lot of diets out there, a lot of programs, it's kind of this like, all right, I have to go all in. Like I have to, mm, okay, I got enough willpower, motivation, let's go. And then four weeks later, the newness and shininess wears off. And then we're like back to square one. So for me, I ask, hey, can you do three days a week for 20, 30 minutes? At that point, they're like, oh, yeah. I thought I had to work out every day. It's like, no, you don't. And I thought I needed a gym. Well, no, you don't. Wow, Really? And then, oh, is it really effective though? Is working out at home as effective? And so then we try to go to this, like have a perfect strategy. Is it as effective? And for me, I'm a big proponent of creating habits because mm -hmm. habits will eventually become lifestyle. And so instead of asking, is this the most perfect? Is this the most ideal workout routine? Question is, hey, have you showed up for yourself three times a week? to work out for 20, 30 minutes, regardless of what exactly you're doing. Have you showed up? Well, yeah, I've been. All right, well, now that you've been doing it for four or five months, let's see if we could enhance the workouts. Let's see if we could upgrade them. Because it's easier to kind of push a moving car even faster than a parked car, <laughs> right? And so that, I'm a... I'm a pragmatist when it comes to uh, coaching and getting people's results. I could talk about, you know, the ideal of what it's going to require. And, and that's the problem. We all have an ideal that we feel like we need to do in order to have success, which is why many parents, they think about losing weight. They want to lose weight, but they don't take action. Because there's this kind of ideal in their head of what it's going to take because they're hearing some guru online um, or they've maybe done other things in the past and they think they need to do those things again. So it's like, man, that's a crazy commitment. That was a lot of sacrifice, right? 
And so they're just kind of hesitant, but I'm like, man, you got to just start 15 minute workouts, three times a week, six months from now, ask the question, how can I get better? Because you might have a different season. School starts. Kids are going back to school, right? So now you're like, wait, I actually have 30 minutes and I could do it at the gym, right? And so the thing is seasons will always change. Sometimes it'll be crazy. Sometimes you feel like as a parent, like, hey, I have a little bit more wiggle room. Sports is done. We have like a eight-week kind of just break. My weekends are back. And then during those eight weeks, you could maybe go to the gym, whereas – 12 weeks ago, that wasn't even a, a thought, right? So mm -hmm. just imperfect action, creating those habits, and then saying, well, how can I improve what I've been doing for six months? And that goes with food as well. Instead of trying to mm -hmm. eat the most healthiest things, instead of cutting out white rice and eating brown rice, because that's what you got to do. Instead of having tons of you know color on your plate, <laughs> right? Just take small steps, right? Just eat more protein. How about that? Instead of, instead of going for the carbs, which they're not bad, but by default, they're cheaper and we gravitate towards them. For example, when you think of a snack, we think of chips, popcorn, right? Uh, it's something in a box, which tends to be just high in carbs. And carbs aren't bad, but here's the thing. Protein keeps us feeling full much longer. Mm -hmm. Protein, if you're exercising, will help you maintain your muscle and actually build muscle. So by default, protein doesn't come to us naturally. So by you saying, you know what? I'm going to start building my meals around protein. So babe, instead of saying, hey, we're going to have pasta tonight. Let's say we're going to have shrimp. Okay, so what are we going to eat shrimp with? Well, let's have pasta and some and a salad. Hey, let's have let's have, you know, salmon. All right. What are we going to build around salmon? Well, let's do potatoes. And so just thinking protein mm -hmm. first. Snacks, same thing. Protein, snacks. And you're going to feel full longer. You're not going to have these late night cravings of a binging, binge eating. And oh, I just, I just, after 8 p.m. when kids go to bed, I just, I just start eating everything. Chances are you had very little protein that day. And just by being intentional, it took me like six years, guys, until I'm like, you know what? I think I'm going to give brown rice a try. <laughs> what? Six years? It's so much healthier for you, coach. It's like, well, sorry, I can't live up to your ideals. Mm -hmm. But it's just one step at a time. And just be, we have a lifetime. And I would rather have you have slow progression over the course of your life than just go all in. And mm -hmm. then th six months later, it's a, oh, I used to work out. Oh, I, I used to eat better. And so I'm a pragmatist, not an idealist. Mm -hmm. And I think too, when you have kids involved, like, man, I've been there, done that with probably every fad diet, all that kind of stuff. Right. And, you know, now that our kids are older and they're mindful too of what they consume, you know, they're really into sports and, you know, treating their bodies properly too. And just from how they've seen us um, I, as well. Right. So I would say like the last five months, there's been a really big shift for me that, okay, it's not following one certain diet. It's really just eating to make sure I'm taking the best care of my body to make sure that at the end of the meal, I feel amazing and not sluggish because <laughs> I ate something that wasn't good for me. Right. So now my question is not like how many calories, how many carbs, how many of this it's how am I going to feel after Am I still going to have energy to keep going or am I going to need a nap? Right. Like, what are you doing to feel your body? Um, and yeah, it's it's interesting because as parents, we never want to be like, don't eat that. That's going to you know, that could cause you to become overweight. Obviously, we don't want to say that to our kids. But like, I think even the conversations of like, if you eat that, how are you going to feel when you're done? right? Um, are you fueling your body or should you be picking a protein to help you feel full, right? Like for our guys, there's always 
and I know it's not the most exciting snacks, but like boiled eggs and like in the fridge <laughs> and different things like that, that they would never dare bring to school. Cause they're like, that stinks. So, you know, like a tuna sandwich. And I know it sounds <laughs> funny, but guess what? They come home from school and if they eat, like two eggs with you know some crackers even or something they're gonna feel full and guess what they're not gonna eat as much compared to they fill a bowl up if i don't catch them with goldfish and then they just keep eating right like so yes. it's it's also teaching our kids but it not being that focal point of if you eat that that could make you become yeah. overweight or something so when you're dealing with parents and even you know as they pass this on to their kids um any suggestions there on how we can sort of implement that into our everyday with the kids as well yeah i mean we have a, as parents we have amazing leverage and it's that we do the grocery shopping and so <laughs> at the end of the day we have control mm -hmm. what we buy and what options we provide our kids at the end of the day it's it's on us now if they're yeah. like 17 18 they're driving at that point, they're gonna they're gonna do their own thing, but hopefully by then we've instilled certain behaviors uh, and lifestyle. Um, and so I have a rule for myself: Yuri, never go to the grocery store hungry, because <laughs> I found I found that once it's in my pantry, look out. I'm coming through. <laughs> My wife, she could have like two, three pieces of, of a chocolate bar. And like she closes it up for the next day. <laughs> That's so foreign for me. If I'm opening up a package, Brian, you're laughing there. Can you relate? <laughs> if I'm opening up the package, it's gone. Yeah. And so... Part of kind of my mindset when I go to the grocery store is don't go hungry, Yuri, because I'm not going to need my kids to to pick out the junk food, if you will. I'm going to go find my gummy worms, my sour gummy worms or peach rings, uh, the Kinder Bar right at the checkout because that looks good. <laughs> All of that. I do that. And so I have kind of a guardrails. So. I make sure that I go to the grocery store after I eat. And so when I'm full, when I have protein in my body, everything doesn't just jump out at me. I'm able to have a kind of clear mind and say, okay, this is what we're getting. I'm getting my proteins, getting my pasta, my rice, um, soda. We really don't have at the house just growing up. Honestly, we don't even have juice in our house. Mm -hmm. Um, we have water. That's typically what they drink is water. And it's crazy how sometimes when we go out and they're like, oh, dad, can we have soda? Can we have soda? Okay, you can have soda. You guys could share a soda. And then one of my kids, after like two, three swigs uh, of the soda, is like, dad, can I have some water? <laughs> so for him, like water is, is something that really quenches his thirst. He doesn't realize why, but that's just what it does. So as parents, it's our responsibility, what we buy, what we um, have in our pantry. And some things that I teach my clients to do is we can take daily, we could take the foods that we normally eat and actually make small tweaks to them to reduce the calorie intake. Because depending on what your goal is. So Tanya, you're saying, hey, you just want to feel good, right? You don't want to feel sluggish. If that's your goal, cool. But let's say someone's like, but my goal, I want to lose some weight. And so naturally we think, okay, if I want to lose weight, I got to demonize carbs and never eat carbs. Well, that ain't <laughs> happening. Carbs are here to stay. <laughs> and and so what we can do is we could do things like this. We, we, we make the pasta and eat it naturally meaning just put salt and pepper you could put some tomato base maybe uh like salsa or or tomato sauce right o on it very low in calories it's when we put alfredo sauce into the pasta where it's not the pasta that's high in calories it's actually the thing that we the add it. <laughs> yeah when, when we're eating the potato the potato's not like bad for you. It, it's all the butter and milk that we just added to the mashed potatoes. 
You see, it's not the steak that's that's not that good for you. It's the extra butter that we put on top to melt it. Melt it, and then we we put a bunch of olive oil on it as well, so it wouldn't stick to the to the grill. See, that's where we're adding a lot of extra calories without adding more volume to the food, and that's the deceptive thing. I've never had a client that told me, Yuri, I eat a lot. That's my problem. I usually hear, Yuri, I don't know what the problem is because I don't eat a lot. So let me give you an example. So you could have two eggs. Two eggs is about 140 calories. But because you know you're you're into education and you've learned so much on Instagram on what you need to be eating, you decided, wow, I, I should have I should put olive oil uh, on the pan because it's it's a good fat. So I need more olive oil in my life or avocado oil. And so in and of itself, yes, it's a healthier fat compared to a saturated fat that's not good. But here's the thing. Two eggs, 140 calories. One tablespoon of olive oil, about 130 calories. So if I use a tablespoon of olive oil with my two eggs, I'm thinking I only had two eggs. It's not a lot of food, but we've just made it more dense by adding the olive oil. And so that 140 calories becomes, what do we got? 280. Watch this, 280 calories. I can have four eggs <laughs> and use like a non-GMO, non-stick spray. And have as many calories as someone with two eggs. And I'm going to feel more full. I'm mm -hmm. going to be stuffed. And I found that that's the big kind of problem. People think, oh, I need to eat healthy. Healthy is not synonymous with weight loss. You could eat too much healthy and still gain weight. Now, if you're like, hey, weight loss isn't my uh, you know, goal, then that's fine. But if it is. Don't think eating healthy is going to get you to lose weight. It's really calories that's going to determine whether we gain weight or lose weight. And we could completely like tweak the like pasta rice. I don't put I don't put butter into rice. Ew, Yuri, that's nasty. And my and my and my question to you is: Do you remember drinking your first cup of coffee? How did it taste? Probably <laughs> nasty. But over time, you came to love get it. Get used to it. <laughs> get used to it. And you can't live without it. Same thing with wine, whatever. Like you get used to it and you enjoy it. And so I'm here to tell you that you could enjoy pasta with a little bit of marinara sauce and absolutely love it. You could enjoy potatoes with salt and pepper and absolutely enjoy it. You don't have to feel like you're eating bland, nasty food. You got to give mm -hmm. yourself some time. And today when I go to the steakhouse restaurant and they bring me my steak and I see a yellow piece of butter that's still <laughs> like melting or when they bring me mashed potatoes and there's two centimeters of oil and kind of butter above the actual mashed potato, I'm <laughs> like, I can't do it. It used to taste amazing. Now I'm like, is that necessary? Is that necessary? <laughs> and the chef doesn't care about your waistline. He just wants you to take a bite and say, man, this is good. <laughs> uh, so making those tweaks is key. And if you have kids, you know, we're talking about kids a little bit. And you're like, man, you know, Susie's a little bit on the, on the you know, bigger side. Yeah, you don't want to be like, don't eat that because mm -hmm. you're going to get fat. Like right. We don't we don't use any f words in our house, yeah, and yeah. that includes fat. <laughs> we don't, and so I'm like, wait, I control what goes in their mouth. I control mm -hmm. what goes, uh, uh, what we buy and bring into the house. So I'm just gonna make them rice and not put butter, and I've drastically mm -hmm. cut their calories, and they don't even realize it. Potatoes, same thing. Salt and pepper. This is how we eat potatoes. 
they don't even realize it. So there's little tweaks that as parents we could make to drastically cut calories. Don't let your kids drink calories. Like we don't mm -hmm. drink orange juice. Isn't it healthy? Like eat an orange juice because you'll stay full right. longer. Your body has to break it down, digest it. And so you want, you want orange juice? Let's eat an orange. And so mm -hmm. we make those tweaks and we could actually have a positive impact on how our kids look and feel without saying, oh, that's bad food. Don't eat the bad food. Oh, that's good food. No, no, no. There's more nutritious food. There's less nutritious. It's kind of the spectrum. And so we talk about the 80-20 rule in the house. Hey, if 80% of the time you're fueling your body with more nutritious food, then yeah, you could have your talkies. You know, <laughs> you could have you could have those chips. That's fine. You could have those yeah. flaming hot Cheetos. But if you fuel your body 80% of the time in a good way, then then that's fine. Mm-hmm. Now the other thing you uh you often talk about as well is your uh your four A formula. Can we kind of uh go through that just to help drive home some of these points? Absolutely. And that's the framework I used initially for myself to lose the 65 pounds uh, and not gain it back. And so basically the framework goes like this. The first A is awareness. You don't know what you don't know. There are things you and I know that we know. We know who the president is. Or I guess for you guys, it's prime minister. Mm -hmm. In yes. Canada, is it? It's prime, right? Yep, you got it. Um, yes. So we know what language we speak. We know how many kids we have. Then there are things you know that you don't know. You know that you can't speak Spanish, for example, or you can't do brain surgery. Like, you know certain things that you just don't know. But then there's a third area. You don't know what you don't know. And then when you learn that very thing that you don't know that you don't know, that's when the light bulbs come on. That's when you have the aha moment. And so the first phase when a client comes into my program is just awareness. And it's not about getting everything right. It's about becoming aware of how many calories you're eating. How many calories do certain foods that you absolutely love have? just to become aware. So for example, here's my story, Chick-fil-A, God's chicken. All right. Uh, say what you <laughs> want to say, but God's chicken. And I used to eat a Chick-fil-A sandwich, but I would dip every bite into God's sauce, the Chick-fil-A sauce. Right. <laughs> and I would dip it, bite, dip it, bite. And so when I would log, the food, I would, I would realize my grilled sandwich has 350 calories, but the two packets of Chick-fil-A <laughs> sauce has 260 calories. So it's like 90 calories less than the sandwich. So I thought to myself for an extra 90 calories, I could have two Chick-fil-A yeah. sandwiches <laughs> without sauce. And so at that point, you realize, man, I could really get full and not feel hungry shortly after, after two sandwiches, right? And so I became more aware of the things that I was eating and how many calories it had. Take, for example, uh, uh, Ben and Jerry's pint of ice cream, right? Pint of ice cream is about 1,300 calories, wow. depending on what flavor. There's this new brand out there called Halo Top. It's a oh, little yeah, bit more that. expensive. <laughs> Halo Top. But the whole pint is 300 calories. 300 compared to 1,200. 12 to 1,400. So I could eat the whole thing for only 300 calories. Whereas the Ben and Jerry's, I could only eat a quarter of that. <laughs> for that same amount. So you become aware. And so a lot of yeah. my clients will come in there. I don't know what my problem is. I know I could eat healthier, but I don't eat a lot. I've been trying to lose weight on my own. And so you don't know what you don't know. So the awareness is just becoming aware 
of how much you're eating, what you're eating, what has protein, what doesn't have protein, things like that. Once you're kind of aware, okay, we move to the second A, and that is accuracy. And now that I'm aware, now I want to be a little bit more accurate with how many calories I'm eating. Am I eating in a calorie deficit? Am I being consistent with three workouts a week? So my focus shifts from just being aware to like, all right, let's hone in. Let, let, let's, uh, let's hit some you know home runs here. And so you're becoming more accurate in tracking and eating and hitting your calorie targets and uh, working out consistently, drinking more water, things like that. And that's accuracy. After you've been doing that for about four weeks, we move to the third phase, which is accelerate. And accelerate says, okay, now that you've been showing up for yourself, you've been doing these three workouts. Now that you've been logging and, and tracking your foods and, and hitting your calorie numbers, uh, what can we do in your schedule, in your busy, hectic life to accelerate your progress? And so we, we start doing things like, hey, I'm going to be more intentional about parking at the end of the parking lot and walk into the grocery store. I'm going to start, start taking the stairs, not the escalator or elevator. Okay, When I'm traveling through the airport, I'm going to walk instead of taking the, you know, the accelerated pathway that moves for you. Doing little things like that. You know what? I'm going to do 10 minutes of 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 stationary bike after my workout. So what, and that looks different to everybody for everybody. But now we're just accelerating our progress without feeling overwhelmed. And then the fourth phase is advance. We ask questions like, like what is the best thing to eat before a workout? What is the best thing to eat after a workout? What are what are some of the more altern, uh, healthier alternatives alternatives to this food, right? And so it, it's like when you go to high school or college, you don't just learn everything, right? Freshman year, you get it piece by piece, and I approach it the same way. And that is why most people they get stuck. Or they just think about their weight loss journey. One day they're going to do it. They're going to start on Monday. And they've been saying that for the last 50 Mondays. But now it's almost January. So, okay, I'm going to start on January. Because we're so focused on getting everything right. Eating healthy all of a sudden. And working out perfectly. And having the perfect workout routine. And it's like, no, 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 no. It's about creating habits that become routines, consistent routines that become a lifestyle until it becomes a part of your DNA. And so habits, they take about 60 days, 66 days, depending on the book you read and what the guru's saying, right? <laughs> but we know habits is something that you could have today, but then you blink your eye, another three months goes by and that habit's gone. So we know habits aren't permanent. Mm -hmm. They're not here to stay for sure. There's no guarantee. And so what ends up happening is it takes about 18 to 22, 24 months for something to become a lifestyle. Something that it's like brushing teeth. You don't really think about it. You don't wake up in the morning thinking, oh, man, another day. And I'm have to brush my teeth two times today, once in the morning, once in the evening. You don't think about it. It's just part of life, Right. Well, health and fitness can be that. It really can, but it takes about 18 to 24 months. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, if you want something to become like a part of your DNA, who you are, it'll take another year or so. And that's where you're going to the to an all-inclusive, you know, resort in Cancun, Mexico, and half your luggage is workout clothes. <laughs> Not because you have to, because you want to. Right. And then you wake up early morning. You're not like like a zombie going to the you know the buffet. You're going to the gym. Not because you have to, but because you want to. 
And that takes time. That won't happen the first 12 weeks or 20 weeks of your weight loss journey. And so the 4A formula kind of keeps those things in perspective and ultimately gets someone for it to become a lifestyle and a part of who they are. All right. Very pragmatic, not an idealist. I don't tell people what they need to eat. They don't get a list from me that says you could eat this, stay away from that. Not at all. If I could, I could get you in a calorie deficit eating Twinkies, you will lose weight. It's probably not healthy <laughs> for you, but you'll lose weight. We'll talk about the Twinkies later on. Let's get you <laughs> let's get you some quick wins. Get you to start losing weight. And then when you're telling me you don't feel really good, but you're losing weight, then we could address some of the food choices you're making. But one step at a time. Can't overwhelm mm-hmm. people by saying you got to do this, 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 and that. It's like, <gasps> that's why we keep thinking about it. That's why we're like, oh, I need to do this. I need to start, but I don't have time. Well, who has time to work out every day for two hours, right? right. Oh, I don't have time. Time. Well, who has time to make two separate meals, one for the kids and the spouse and the one for yourself? And so if that's what we think we need to do, no wonder we're, we're hesitant. We, we keep thinking about it because our perspective on what we need to do, what we need to sacrifice oftentimes is skewed. And if someone just gives me an opportunity to have a conversation with them, we shatter those limiting beliefs. And they realize, oh, I can do it as a single mom. Oh, I can do it having two jobs. Wow, I can do it and include my family. I don't feel like I'm taking, I'm actually giving to my family while I'm on my weight loss journey. So that's the 4A formula. It's uh, awareness. And the second one is uh, accuracy, accelerate, and then advance. Okay. And I mean, as you were talking, I'm like, okay, this is all stuff that makes sense. (laughs) And for me personally, like I said, I've been there, done that many times. And I I do enjoy working out. Mm -hmm. And something that I decided this year, I don't really set New Year's resolutions. So I had to start before January 1st um, was every day I'm going to work out. And I started with it just being 20 minutes for like the first week or two. So I set my alarm. 25 minutes earlier, because I had to, you know, get up and get dressed and all that. Um, did that for a couple weeks. Then it was like, okay, see, you got this. You're good. Now 30 minutes every day. And I mean, it's not a Tabata or hit class every day, or it's not weights every day, right? But my thing was like, I know for me, if I say work out three days a week and leave the rest, it's for me personally, it's not going to work. I need to get into a habit of just moving intentionally, right? Um, So some days it's just, you know, a walk and nothing too crazy. Anyways, now we're here in April and now I've gotten to an hour early every morning, right? So on the weekend we were away and my daughter just said last night, she's like, you didn't work out while we were away. I'm like, actually I did. I, (laughs) so I brought my stuff and I woke up and I went down to the gym at the hotel and I got my workouts in because now, like you said, it hasn't been that amount of time, but it's part of the day. And it's not with, uh, I have a, I need to check my weight on the scale or that it's, I feel better. I know I'm losing weight, but it's the focus is, shifted right where it's not oh i need to fit into this in x amount of time it's just that every day i need to do something that's because one i we can move our bodies which is you know not everybody can do that and two i want to be here as long as i can right so that kind of stuff has been definitely beneficial and also the shift of when you have kids who are taking care of their bodies because you know, they're mm-hmm. athletes and now they're at that age where they can set their goals. I'm like, what's my excuse? Especially as a parent, I'll never forget the day I I saw a dad screaming at his kid on the court. Like, you know, you're, you're lazy, like start moving faster. And I look over and I'm like, okay, no wow. assumptions here. But you, sir, in my head, do not look like somebody who's that moves done much likely <laughs> right and i'm like oh my gosh i when i don't want to be that parent not that i would scream something out like that but you want to be the one that's leading by example in all aspects of their life right so uh, yeah it's definitely been a different shift for me personally in regards to the health journey and not having like these specific numbers and you know what you fit into it's 
that comes with it. And that's the nice thing. But when you're not focused on that, I feel for me personally, it's something that's definitely sustainable, something that I can do long term. I don't dread it. It's just now part of my life. Yeah, 100 percent. Like there's outcome goals. I want to lose 30 pounds. I want to be a size eight. I want right outcome goal. And you're, I agree with you 100% process goals. Who do I need to become? If you focus on the process goal of what type of person do you want to become, then those outcome goals will follow. They right. will. And if I'm telling myself, you know, I'm the type of person that eats two out of three meals per day that I personally make home cooked. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you focus on that results will come. I'm the type of person that doesn't eat fast food more than three times a week. I'm the type of person that drinks a gallon of water each day. I'm Mm -hmm. the type of person. The first thing I drink is 16 ounces of water before I go for my coffee, because I'm dehydrated when I wake up. That's why we sweat when we sleep, right? And so when you focus on the type of person that Mm -hmm. you want to become, then the outcome goals will follow. And you don't feel like you're fighting against time. Oh, how fast can I lose weight? Oh, I'm not losing fast enough. If you're asking yourself those questions on your weight loss journey, oh, wow, I expected the weight to go down. It went up. Well, this sucks. This doesn't work. I guess it's just my (laughs) genes. Oh, wait, I have a thyroid issue, right? Like we start going down that rabbit hole and it's like, no, 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 just focus on showing up for yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm a big proponent, standard over schedule. And what I mean by that is have a set of standards that you hold to and make sure you accomplish those every week. So if my standard is three times a week exercise, I'm going to hit it. And if I plan on doing it today, but I'm just out of my funk, it's just got a, got off of a a phone, bad conversation, uh, talk to my boss, whatever. I'm just not feeling it today. It's okay. You still have the week hit your standard. And so Mm -hmm. uh, you you mentioned, and I've had several clients who said that like, Hey, I think I need to work out more because if I have days where I'm not working out, I feel like I get out (laughs) of rhythm. And then before I know it, I'm not working out. So we created this thing where we got workouts and we have movement. So workout Mm -hmm. is you're lifting weights, all right? You're lifting weights. And that is considered a workout for us, not not cardio, not Peloton, not the treadmill. You're lifting. It's resistance training for your muscles three times a week. And then the days that you're not doing that, have movement. Like be intentional. Like I'm going to do 20 push-ups, right? I'm going to walk around the block. Like you're being intentional about movement. Sure. Go for it. But whatever you do, make sure a week does not go by that you did not do your three workouts. And if you could do those movements as well, man, it's more power to you. Now we're accelerating mm-hmm. our, 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 you know, uh, progress. But keeping standard over schedules has given a lot of people just like, this is so, uh, this is a relief. Because if you have to just perform every day and then you just have a crazy day and you don't do it, then that can become discouraging and one day turns into two days and it just kind of rolls down the hill from there, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Standard over schedule. Mindset. It's, an, it's another overlooked. I would say it's the number one, <laughs> seriously, number one overlooked aspect of a weight loss journey is mindset because the conversations Mm -hmm. we have in our own head is what causes us to just give up. And so when you have the right mindsets, okay, it's so much easier to, uh, to make it to the finish line. I don't know how much longer you guys want to talk. I have five mindsets that are just, I could, 
fly through them if you want. We could do another podcast on it. Five <laughs> mindsets that I teach my clients. That man, when you make those switches and you embrace those mindsets, you're gonna have a breakthrough in your weight loss journey. So y'all tell me what you guys want to do. Yeah, 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 yeah let's, let's go. Let's and go then through. after we'll wrap it up. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So when I do a kickoff call with every client, I'm like, all right, these are the five mindsets that you need to make, uh, you know, if you want to succeed. All right, five. And here we go. So the first one is one day at a time. A lot of times people will start a program, start coaching, and think, oh, I have 16 weeks. I got plenty of time. And so I said, no, no, come day one, week one, your program is one day. That's it. Monday, let's go. That's all you got. Don't think about, oh, I got a crazy week. How am I going to work out three times this week? Oh my gosh, it's finals week. Or man, my kids recital or we're going on vacation. Like, no, it's Monday. One day, can you crush one day? That's it. Once you do that, you wake up on Tuesday, one day program. That's it. You don't have 16 weeks. You don't have, you know, three months until your vacation and you're trying to lose a little bit. of. It's just one day. That's it. So that, that's number one. The next one is not every day has to be perfect. This is what kills a lot of people. Mm -hmm. They don't have a perfect day. Ah, what the heck? What's the <laughs> point? I'm, I can't do it, right? Because they are shooting for perfection. I built my program. C's get degrees. No joke. C's get degrees. <laughs> you give me a C average, we're gonna we're gonna graduate you. You're gonna have a great, you're gonna have a great future. That's what we do. The third mindset is your best meal comes after your worst meal. This is my favorite one personally. Best meal comes after your worst meal. What do I mean by that? If on average we eat three meals a day, breakfast, lunch, dinner, times seven, you have 21 meals. That's how Yuri thinks about the week. I have 21 meals. And let's say it's a Saturday morning and you are expecting that great weekend and you're coming down the stairs and you slip and you try to grab the, you know, kitchen uh, t uh, island. But what you didn't know, there were donuts there. And as you fall and your mouth is still open, somehow two donuts <laughs> fell into your mouth. Saturday morning. Oh my gosh, what a disaster, right? And so what a lot of people do is, this day is ruined. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start over tomorrow, tomorrow. or I'm going to start <laughs> over Monday. Look, it's Saturday. So you still have two more, uh, two, three more meals that day. Then Sunday, another three, that's six meals. Over donuts, you're going to throw away six meals to start mm. over on Monday? What people don't realize is what we eat, how much we eat, it's like a rolling number. It does. It, there's no hard reset come midnight. It's a rolling number. <laughs> so if Saturday I have this attitude of, ah, who cares? I'm going to start over Monday. Well, then all the meals Saturday and Sunday – are just going to roll over and I'm going to be in that much of a bigger hole come Monday. And so the best meal comes after your worst meal. It's like regardless of what you ate, regardless of what you consider to be a bad meal, your next meal is going to be on point. Your next snack is going to be a protein snack. Okay. We could zoom out and say, hey, your best week comes after your worst week. Your best month comes after your worst month, meaning, hey, right now, just get back, focus, your next meal, you got this. So that's the third one. The next one, the fourth mindset, winning streaks. Think of your progress in terms of winning streaks. So let's say come Monday, you're starting, you crush the day. That's one day that you have under your belt. Can you get two? And the way I kind of teach my clients, like, well, what determines whether or not I won the day, right? And so for weight loss, I tell them, did you hit your calorie goal? We don't do macros. We don't track fat, protein, carbs, all of that, because that can get overwhelming. We go from not tracking anything to now tracking all these numbers and becoming math scholars. Like, that's not happening. 
And so what we do is we simply just hit our protein and our calories. That's it. I don't care how much grams of fat you have. I don't care how much grams of carbs. If you hit your protein and if you hit your calorie for the day, that's all I care. I'm not even telling you what you need to be eating. That's it. And so did you hit your calorie number? Yes, I did. Great. Did you track all of your food? Like we use MyFitnessPal. Did you track? Did you have a food log? Did you track it? Yes, I did. And did you drink a gallon of water? Yes, I did. You won the day. You got one day under your belt. That's it. Go to bed knowing that you won. Tuesday come uh, rolls uh, uh, rolls around and we won the day again. Great. That's two-day win streak. Can you hit three right out the gate? I did, Yuri. Actually, I got six. Awesome. All right. So six-day win streak. Cool. That next day, you're like, ah, it wasn't that great. Great. Who cares? Because your best day comes after your worst day. Let's get another 10-day win streak. So when you start thinking about win streaks, it gets really fun. Because let's say you are going on a camping trip or you're traveling out of town for a wedding. And a lot of times people are like, oh, snap, I got this wedding. It's going to kill my momentum. Oh, man, I know when I get back, it's going to, uh, right? And so here's what I tell my clients. I don't want you going to a wedding and eating like a peasant, eating just <laughs> salads. Okay, you're at a wedding. Have a good time. So here's what we do. Give me a 10, 15-day win streak leading up to that weekend. And then when you come back, Give me another 10, 15 day win streak. And so that's 30 days. Your two, mm-hmm. three day weekend is not going to destroy 15, 16 right. days. Right. And so that's what I do even on even on a macro level. My family's in California. And so during COVID, um, we went once for like, I think six or eight weeks. Almost overstayed our welcome because our parents were like, oh, what are you guys planning on going back? You guys have four kids. You guys are kind of loud, right? And really. And so, but I ate everything that they ate. Nobody would have thought that I was watching what I was eating. And here's why. Because the two, three months leading up to it, I had some amazing wind streaks. Once I left California, came back to my own turf, I had another two, three months of amazing win streaks. And at the end of the year, all things considered, I had more win streaks than I had not win streaks. And that is how I stay in shape all year long. And when I'm in social settings, when I'm hanging out with people, when my clients are doing the same thing, we're not gaining weight and we're always progressing towards our goal because we think in terms of win streaks. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the fourth one, I mean, the fifth and final mindset is take ownership. At the end of the day, take ownership. Nobody's going to care about your progress, about your results more than you, especially for my, you know, for my parents, like you can't expect your spouse to care about your progress more than you. And so, and then at the same time, your spouse cannot be expected to like never bring foods that will quote unquote tempt you. And no, 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 no. Like you got to take ownership. Your spouse might be sitting right across from you on the couch eating something that's tempting you. It's not their fault. You got to take ownership. No one's going to care. And so your spouse can't be that accountability partner as much as we like that, as much as that looks good on paper. Practically, that's (laughs) never been good for a guy to call out his wife on her food choices. (laughs) You know, it's just not good. Um, so you got to take complete owner, uh, ownership. I, 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 I tell that to my coaches as well. I have coaches that work for me to help me with my load. And so to them, I tell them, you got to take 100% ownership over the, our client. But to the client, I say, you got to take 100% ownership over your progress. Your coach can't help you get there. We're not there to, you know, tell you don't eat that. You're eating too much of that. Like you got to take 100% ownership. Your friends aren't going to say, oh, Yuri, you're trying to lose weight, right? Okay. I was going to offer this pizza place, but because you're trying to lose weight, let's not go there. They're not, 
That's not what friends are for. Friends are going to say, <laughs> hey, let's go to that joint. And you're thinking like, oh, my gosh, that's not going to get me closer to my goal. Right? And so your friends aren't, aren't going to take control. Actually, your friends don't care. Actually, your friends don't want you to lose weight. They say they're happy for you until you start looking better. <laughs> they're like, wait a second. Wait a second. You're really for real about this weight loss thing. Maybe. Why? You become a fanatic. Uh, you're taking things a little too extreme. And then we start hearing like, oh, you're a little too much. You're, a, you know, and it's like, oh, it's interesting. Because nobody ever calls me out for just sitting on the couch all day. Mm -hmm. But once I become to, um, once I uh, start improving myself, all right. of a sudden the people around me are like, are you sure this isn't an idol? Are you sure you're not, you know, being a little <laughs> too extreme? Enjoy life. And so extreme ownership, you got to own it. And Eventually, people are going to come to you and ask you for questions and, hey, how'd you do it? This and that. In the meantime, as a spouse, your spouse is not going to, you know, be their support. Yes, with their words and hopefully words of encouragement. And, and if you're like, babe, I don't know if we should order Chinese tonight. Why don't we do a healthier option? I'm hoping the spouse will be like, sure. But your spouse is not going to be like, babe, no. Don't order from there because remember what your goal is. And, you know, they're going to be like, okay, yeah, I'm feeling it too. Let's go. So you got to just own it and run with it. So those are the five mindsets that if you if you make those switches, your journey is going to be much easier, much more sustainable and enjoyable. Mm -hmm. And the chances of you reaching your goal, much higher. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing those. Very helpful. It was worth the time. <laughs> Yay! Let's go. Now, I have I have one last question for you. Do you think we kind of understate the value of sleep, kind of as a as a society? One hundred percent. Yeah, I, we could have a whole another conversation here uh, <laughs> for weight loss. Let me tell you this. Hey, should I go to uh, sleep earlier? Yes, because the sooner you go to bed, the faster your mouth shuts. Okay, let's just let's be real. The longer we stay up, mm -hmm. the more we eat. It's just, yeah, that's just what we do. Um, and so secondly, you know, there are a lot of people that will say, well, I want to work out in the morning. I want to do it first thing in the morning. But Yuri, I'm not a morning person. Uh, it's so hard for me to get up. And so we put so much focus and attention on the morning. Really, we need to focus on the night before. Because if I go to bed earlier and I get my seven hours of sleep, then 5 a.m. is not that early. If by 5 a.m. I'm at seven, seven and a half hours of sleep, getting up is very easy. It really is, mm -hmm. right? And so I say, hey, focus on the night before. What is your evening routine? And so honestly, that's a bonus that I do for my clients. I don't really promote it on my social media. I don't really talk about it. I talk about, about weight loss, feeling good. Once they come in, I teach them uh, to set up a morning routine. Okay. I uh, teach them to create an evening routine. Um, there's another habit that we do is feed the brain. There's a lot of moms, dads, especially, if we're, uh, you know, watching the kids, we kind of stop growing. Right. We have our job or we're at home with the kids. We kind of don't grow. And so for that mom that's at home or, or, or that dad that's just kind of focused on his work, like how are you feeding yourself? Are you are you reading audiobooks, podcasts like Disrupt the Everyday Podcast? Like, are you feeding yourself? Are you growing? And so I have those uh, habits throughout their 16 week program with me where they're becoming their best version, the best version of themselves and sleep is absolutely one of them, right? Mm -hmm. our, our, our hormone levels, uh, they, they get right. If you will. Um, we, uh, we wake up and, and we make better choices when we have our sleep, our recovery, if we're exercising is much better. So 100%, it used to be where the less sleep you had, the cooler you were. Nah, <laughs> the more sleep you have, the cooler you are. And so, yeah, sleep is very important. 
Awesome. Well, Yuri, I'd just like to give you the opportunity to share anything that you might be working on that we can look forward to and uh, just the ways that we can connect with you. Yeah. So I'm very active on Instagram and it's coach Yuri underscore. You could put that in the show notes. And so people follow me there and the free stuff that I give out there is enough to really push you. Uh, I don't, I don't sit there and say, this is my paid uh, content and this is my free content. Look, the value that I provide is doing one-on-one -on -one coaching. I'm not smarter than Google. I am not smarter than chat GPT, right? But I know how to get someone from feeling stuck to take an action. And I found it's not the lack of information. It's the lack of accountability and it's the uh, investment. When we invest in ourselves, we show up for ourselves, mm -hmm. right? Where your treasure is, there your heart will be. Yeah. And so I will give you all the information. And if you really take action on it, you will get incredible results. Coach Yuri underscore. Uh, that's where you could follow me. And uh, I look forward to serving you. Great. Awesome. Well, Yuri, thank you again so much for taking the time to have this conversation with us. And for everyone who watched or listened to this episode of the podcast, thank you for letting us disrupt your everyday. Thanks for listening to the Disrupt the Everyday podcast. For more ways to listen, connect with us on social media. To be a guest or to partner with us, check out our link tree at Disrupt the Everyday. Join us next time for more ways to disrupt the everyday.